there's no other. Jesus is the way. Is a holy way. Glorify the name of God for the special opportunity we have to be blessed this evening again. This is your favorite program, Kingdom Life, coming to you from your inspirational station, Echo 89.75 FM. This program comes up from 8.05 to 8.35 every Sunday evening. I'm Jumi Adetoyeshi Lagonju, the minister on this program. With me in the studio tonight is my co-presenter, that's our sister Lua Fumilayo. You are welcome to the program tonight. Good evening, listener. Thank you very much. My dear listener out there, the Lord has been using this program, using us to bless millions of people out there. Several families that have challenges, they've had testimonies to give. People out there, individuals that ordinarily, they were saying, oh, they've lost hope. They found hope being restored, being pointed to our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the source of every hope anyone we expect in life. And quite a number of people that have written off uh, their partners, written off relationships with their children. They found solace in God and making amends and healing every wound. So my dear listener out there, whatever may be your own situation, testimony time is here for you, for you to have wonderful things to point to as in the Lord had done this for me. Great to be your testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said earlier on, I'm Jumi Adeto Isha Lagonju. Please, we want to implore you on this program, when you hear this message, see what you can do as your own action item. Apply them to your life, and as you keep doing so, people will be coming to ask you for the secret of your success, for the secret of the success of your children, and you'll be pointing them to our Lord Jesus Christ. In the previous episode, we had a series of discussions on God's expectation from parents. And we look at few examples in the scriptures. One example we look at was that of Joseph, who left home as a teenager. Before, before we even got to Joseph, this is as a result of what the Lord said, what God said about Abraham, that I can vouch for him. I know everybody that lives with him, even his slave, the servant, everyone that stays with him, he will bring them up in my way, teaching them my my, 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 everything about me, the values I hold, bringing them up in what we refer to as the way of God. For them to be godly in what they do. God said, I can vouch for Abraham. After that, he taught his children. The children also taught their own children. And it became a kind of family uh, virtue, the right, being transferred to the next one, cascading it to the younger ones. And we also add in the New Testament account, our apostle Paul said, look, the kind of behavior I, I saw in you, the traits, the faith you have, Timothy, it's as a result of investment your grandmother made in you, and that one went into even to your to your mother from Louis to Eunice, and the same thing is in you. And the question we ask ourselves in that episode is how we what will God say about us? Will he be able to vouch for us and say, Look, I trust him, I trust her. He would have brought up or he will bring up his children in my way. So we saw it in Joseph. I was a teenager, he left home, and that godly value was in him. Everything he did, he, and he was in a country where there was nothing like church, nothing like reference to God, the, the God of us, no. All they had was their pure idolatrous practices. They are even embodiment of idol worshipping, then in the land of Egypt. So, but out there, he singled himself out. Every situation he was, he was ever there, re making reference to God and using God as the basis on which he did everything he did. So, the question for you and I is, what is our frame of reference? We are told that in terms of integrity, Joseph was known for that. The way he behaved, the way he related with people, he was known for that integrity. However, the area where he, in terms of sensitivity to 
spiritual things, reference to God, and he had that uncommon wisdom to the extent that the king said, is there anyone in whom we can find such a wisdom apart from Joseph because of the revelation he was receiving from God? And the Lord is reminding you and I, the more we bring up our children with this godly value from onset, pointing them to the right source, which, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, as they grow up, they will continue to manifest that great trait, that wonderful blessings that will continue to follow them wherever they are. Now, we add Joseph here in a situation whereby he was in prison with fellow prisoner, and we are told that his disposition, the way he was behaving to them, is someone that will walk to them and say, come, what are you guys going through? I know somebody that is able to help. He was always cheering up. Let's look at this together in the book of Genesis chapter 40. 40. We look at it as um, from verse 6 to verse 8. Genesis chapter 40 from verse 6 to verse 8. There we see what Joseph exhibited out there. Even though he was in a challenging situation, you can read for us. And Joseph came in to them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his house of, of his lost house saying why do you look so sad today verse 8 and they said to him we each have have had a dream and there is no interpreter of it so joseph said to them do not interpretation belong to god tell them to me please thank you now we see a a, a wonderful trait in joseph one thing I want us to deduce from here is this. It takes a godly mind to be positively minded, cheering up others, irrespective of his or her own situation. So when we bring up our children in the way of God, with this godly treat, with this godly mind, guess what will be happening? Wherever they are, they will be exhibiting positive attitude. As in, look, I know my Lord is there for me. When people are going through situations, they, oh, you need anything? Is there anything you are going through? And people will be saying, ah, like the Yoruba people will say, like, uh, I love, pardon, me, pardon me to say this, but, ah, any Emma Oma Shinyo, Oma Newao is a godly person, is wonderful character, is something that you need to, you, you can even emulate it. So, what are we saying? It's not just a matter of picking it up from nowhere, it is the seed that has been sown in him by the parents. And we are saying, we are believing God that. Oh, where our children will go to the right adult out there, having great adulthood that will be enviable by anybody. It is now. We need to lay that foundation. We need to sow that seed in them so that they grow. They will have that positive mind. And in whatever they do, making reference to God in everything they are doing. Now, we are looking at a very key part in what uh, Joseph went through before he was sold out. The rivalry between him and his brother, the enmity between them, and how a time came after the Lord had lifted up Joseph, he had to now come across his parents, I mean his siblings. He had to meet them again. But before then, let's point to a place in the book of Genesis chapter 43. Just to uh, retreat to us that it's not just a matter of Joseph just formulating what he did. He came from a home where that seed is sowed in them. When Jacob was sending forth his brother, after their first visit to the land of Egypt to get food, if they were going back, see what Joseph, I mean, what Jacob said in chapter 43, verse 14. And may God Almighty give you mercy before the man, that he may release your other brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. Thank you. The reference to God there by their father said, look, may God Almighty. The reference there is God. No wonder Jacob was able to load everything, tint everything, paint everything with reference to God. I know my God is able to do this. What are we saying? You know, we always say on this program, you can't give what you don't have. So as parents out there, how well are we in understanding of this Heavenly Father? It is what the children see in us that will eventually become part of them. I'm not talking of religiosity. I'm talking of spirituality. Because well, there's a difference between being spiritual and being religious. The Pharisees were very religious. They know all the commandments of hand. They do, do this, don't do this, do that. That is religion. And Lord Jesus Christ was spiritual. He knew what the application is, how it, uh, uh, it affects the life of every other person, and now it can be used to glorify the name of God, not for self-glorification. 
So, my dear listener out there, what the children see in us because what they do and what they live out there. Jacob became a wonderful role model for the children. And Joseph was able to latch into this, was able to connect to this. Eventually, when the brother showed up, it takes a godly mind. It takes a God-fearing mind to do what Joseph did. And where did he get from? The foundational values the parents are sown in him. Let's look at this in the book of Genesis chapter 45. But before we go into that, you know, I always love to read a lot of things and phrases in the scripture and somebody said oh you always made this quotation yes i made the quotation because they passed the message across were able to deliver it and that phrase is paraphrased by Mahatma gandhi but before we go into that let's look at what joseph did in the book of genesis chapter 45 from verse 5 to 9 but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for god sent me before you to preserve life for these two years, the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. Verse 7. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now, it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Thank you. Now, the brothers came. They remember the evil thing they did for him. In fact, they have given him up to have died all along before they eventually came across him. At the end of the day, what did Joseph do? Let me just paint the picture a little bit. A lot of us may not understand what it takes to sell somebody out as a slave in the land of Israel. Imagine a young adult, 17 years old, sold out he would have died in the pit there with scorpion and snakes and a lot of things but he did not die for a slave to be bought in the land of israel at that time i mean sorry beg your pardon in the land of egypt for a slave to be brought bought even here those days when they were into slave trade they need to make the slave to be stuck naked so that whoever wants to buy the slave will now look at the product, the good that he was about to buy. That's the way they refer to it. It's like buying a product that you can use, tool, machine, that you use at home. Just like you get a tool you want to buy and you are examining the specification. So a slave needs to be stuck naked and you have to turn around 360 degrees for the prospective buyer to look at how is the chest, how is the tie, no wearing of pants, nothing. And that was the kind of ridicule Joseph was subjected to well-built heavily built guy and somebody in the marketplace not in secret openly and they will say okay how much yes i'm ready to offer this amount no 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 this is the amount i will offer no no no. it's more than that this one is empty i put more money on it it was a bidding process after being humiliated he went to serve as a, as a servant from there he was wrongfully accused he went to prison from prison out there he was forgotten in the prison my dear listener, imagine somebody subjecting you and I to such ridicule, to such punishment, and you come across the person, now you are in position of authority. You are now a king, you are a governor, you are commissioner of this. You are invited. What I'm saying is you have all it takes to smoke life out of that person. What will you do? What will I do? It takes a godly man for me to say, Aha, God don't catch you. God doesn't catch anyone. You know people will say, Allah until Mue in Yoruba language. No. The God we are referring to is the idol. I don't God. When you say God has caught you, the God we have is not that kind of God. If it's Jehovah God, if you are referring to Yahweh, it's not that God that behaved that way. The God Joseph knew is the one he referred to in verse 9. Can you read that verse 9 for us again? That is the reference Joseph made to God. How dare the God in the scripture. Genesis chapter 45 verse 9. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. Yes, thank you. And he now went further to say, you meant evil for me, but God made it good. God sent me here for a purpose to be a deliverer of nation. What are we saying? Mahatma Gandhi says something, and this is the quote. Now, I want you to listen to this. He says, it is very easy enough. It is easy enough to be friendly to one's friend, to our friend. But to befriend the one who regards himself as your enemy is the quintessence of true religion. The other is mere business. Let me explain it in smaller, in simpler English. 
he says it is very, very easy for us to say, oh, I'm a friend to my next door neighbor, my landlord, my this, my friend in the office, my colleague in the office, because there's a business connection between you, something that connects you together. Once that source of business, that relationship is strained and the person becomes your enemy, how well can you forgive that person when the person does something against you? So the, the old man was saying it is very easy. It is easy enough to be friendly to one's friend. But to befriend somebody who regards himself or herself as your enemy is a true test of religion. The other is mere business. So if you say, oh, uh, this person is my friend, this person is my friend, wonderful, it's very easy to refer to someone who is a friend. But let that person, let him or her do something bad to you, something terrible to you. And the next day you are to relate with that person. What will you do? And that was the word, that was the commandment that Lord was giving the children of Israel, telling them, look, in the book of Exodus chapter 23, we are not going to read because of our time. Verse 4 and 5, it says, When you are on the way, and you come across the oxen of your enemy, do not ignore it, rescue it, take it to that your enemy, and say, oh, please, I met your oxen in the pit. It's in distress, I've rescued it. That's one part. The other part says, if you see the donkey of the person that hates you, in distress, do not ignore it, take it to the person, say, oh, please, I know you hate me, but I don't want this your donkey to die take it back that is the test of our faith of our love the lord is saying as we are bringing up our children bring them up to have this kind of understanding the love the kindness we read this in one of the episodes as recorded in the book of genesis i mean beg your pardon galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 to verse 25 where we are told about the fruit of, of the spirit it's a gift and those are the things that come with what we expose the children to so Joseph here was able to exhibit this about, I mean, to his brother and was saying, look, it's not God, it's not you that brought sent me here. It's God that sent me up front to this place. I don't give it, don't worry. I'm not even bothered about what you have done to me, what you have, the evil you have done towards me. It is just a matter of my reference to God that now enabled me to do this. You know, one thing that Joseph did when he gave that to his first child, a lot of time we just read story without looking at the connection. The name of the first child he called it, he called the name of the child Manasseh, which means God had made me to forget. Manasseh, forget. God had made me to forget all the things I've gone through. My dear listener, do you have a Manasseh as your child? When you name your child Manasseh, God had made me to forget what people have done to me. All the things I've gone through. That child will also grow up to have the godly mind. And that's what we have been looking at. God, the way God sees, I mean, uh, uh, the expectation from parents to children. And that was the, the seed, the parent of Jacob, as sown in him, for him to be able to have such godly traits. Joseph forgave his brother and attributed his rights to glory to God. God has made me the Lord of all Egypt, not alluding that success to himself. His brothers were still struggling with the guilt of their evil deeds. But Joseph gave glory to God for this achievement. Let's look at this quickly in the book of Genesis chapter 50 uh, from verse 19 to 21. There you will see what, what transpired. Because humanly speaking, people will say, ah, but I've done this to this person. Hey, with, maybe he's even relating with us because our father is around. Maybe he has forgiven us because of our dad. What if the father died? Now the father died. The father was no more. They did not realize his reference was to a greater father. That is God. So my dear listener out there, when our reference is to him, in the way we behave, in the way we relate, our action will surpass every human expectation. Continue reading. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? For as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day. To save many people alive. Verse 29. Verse 21. Excuse me. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Thank you. You will still read that last two verses. But let me just point a place out. In chapter, that same chapter, chapter 50 from verse 15. We are told that when Joseph's brother saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messenger to Joseph saying, Before your father died, 
he commanded, saying, they did not say before our father died. But of shame, of identifying that we plotted to kill our own father, our own brother. Now they said, um, before our father died, before your father died, check the way they said it. Before your father died, he communicated sin. Thus says, you should say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brother and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the trespass of the servant of of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. But lo and behold, Joseph's reference was not to the father. His reference was to God. Now, what the Lord is telling you and I is, in every action we took, we, we take, beg your pardon, in every action we take or what we have taken in the past, our reference should be to God, not to man. A lot of people will say, because of so-so leader, that's why I'm doing this, this to you. My dear listener out there, the leader is not as great as God. God created him. Joseph said, look, it's not even about the father you are pointing to. Where I am today, read those two verses, uh, that, what Joseph said. Verse 19. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Thank you. What made Joseph to be able to do that is the reference to God. Before we conclude tonight, do realize that all this investment of reference to God, when we make it in our children, whatever we do, they will have greater testimonies to share. Wherever they are, they will succeed. Something was unique about Joseph. Wherever we eat, he went, the presence of God was he, he, he is ever with him. And that's the same thing that the Lord is saying, that when we teach our children, when we bring them up to be able to understand who we see, serve the living God that we serve, they will continue to succeed. They will not have any failure. If any challenging situation come their way, they will be focused and say, look, I know my God is able to deliver me. In Genesis chapter 39, from verse 2 to 5, the reference is made to God that the, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Wherever your, wherever your children are, wherever they are walking, wherever you are walking, even you hearing the message tonight, because of God in your life, because of his presence in you, your organization will be blessed. Continue reading. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper, prosper in his hand. Verse 4. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had put under his authority. Verse 5. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thank you very much. That was exactly what happened to Joseph. And the Lord is saying, as we bring up our children, for them to grow up in this way of God, whatever they do, the presence of God will be so overwhelming in their life that whatever they touch will prosper. For their sake, the organization will be preferring them. For their sake, things will be working well. Now, my dear listener out there, the same thing applies to you. Let's look at another account in the book, that same chapter, chapter 39 of Genesis from verse 20 to 23. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Just pause a little there. We are saying that even if you hear that, oh, this person has a little bit of challenge, a little challenge there, a little bit of issues out there, the Lord is saying he will deliver your children. He will continue to uphold them. So, my dear listener, what have you got to lose? By applying the way of God in the way you live and even teaching our children, we are already equipping them for success, for victory. And whatever you they do out there, they will continue to prosper. Continue reading. Verse 22. And the keeper of the prison committed Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper and the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority. Because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Thank you very much. We are told that whatever he did prosper in the uh, whatever Joseph did prosper where he is my dear listener out there 
God loves you. He cares for you. The psalmist said, I have been young. Now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. What is he saying? That the righteous we find it out there is the act of Zedka. How much of kindness? How much of righteousness? Righteous as in kindness. Are, do we even have in you? The Lord is saying, when you and I go about as embodiment of compassion, of kindness, of love with others, you're already sowing a seed in your children. The result of it is wherever your children are, they will be uncommonly favored. And every, every Israelite, everyone out there, they understand this connection of divine blessing, of divine provision, of divine protection over their children wherever they are, through the way they live their own life. How well are we living this life to replicate the act of our Lord Jesus Christ? We are told in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how our Lord Jesus Christ was, I mean, completely being guided, living with the Holy Spirit out there, anointed out there, going about, doing good for the Lord was with him. My dear listener, God loves you, he cares for you. As we apply his teaching, we will continue to have testimonies of his greatness to share in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. You can link us on our email address kingdomlifefamily at yahoo.com or through our producer Taiwo Omoshule Eko 89.7 FM Agidingbi. Ikeja, Lagos. A sound engineer has been a Sonayo Joseph. Remain blessed. Thank you very much. Sonayo Joseph has been a sound engineer and Taiwo Moshule, our producer. I appreciate your support out there. My dear listener, I'm Jumi Adetu Ishalagunju. God loves you. He cares for you. Let others see Christ in you. Be part of this program next week Sunday by 8.05. Remain blessed. <laughs> Righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness, peace, more and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Everybody sing righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part? Oh, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, come on, everybody. Don't you want to be a part? Oh, don't you want to be a part? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom?